It took a while, but as promised, uh, Polymaker PA12 polyamide nylon, 12, carbon fiber 10, 10% carbon fiber. Finally got around to testing this. I'll explain why it took so long. Stick around. Hey everyone, welcome back. I'm Scott, Edge of 3D. You know that you found the channel. You clicked on it. So, um, I've done some the other polyamides, nylons from Polymaker and, and a few others. Um, and I the PA12 CF10 finally got around to doing that. And it's the reason it's taken so long is I actually printed all the parts for this 90 days ago, but there's a there's a thought process out in the World Wide Web that nylon needs time to acclimate once printed to environmental, absorb moisture. Now there's some people that boil it. Um, I thought about trying to pressure cook it and I realized that it's not, people aren't gonna do that. If you're, if you're printing a, um, a carabiner, you're, you're not going to be boiling this part. It, it, it's just, it's not practical. I had some other stuff here that I had printed out. Um, people just aren't going to do that. So I decided not to do that. And fortunately this time of year where I live, we, we have high humidity. So I printed everything out. I printed all my test pieces and then I just left them out in the open air for 90 days, actually over 90 days. But my, my goal was 90 days. That way they had a chance to acclimate. Ups and downs in the humidity and everything else. 90 days. And then I ran the test. Now, in the past, I've run tests where I've tested the part as printed. And then I've annealed the parts and tested them as annealed. I'm not going to anneal for all the tests anymore. It's just too much. Um, I will anneal for doing heat testing. Like, this fixture here. Um, that That is something I'm going to continue to anneal the parts for and do the testing on this where I do um, this here where it hangs weights on there where I hang 50 grams of weight on there. And then the flag tests, uh, some of these laying around here, where as printed and then anneal one of them and put them in these little bases, which I have the bases here. And then you slip the flag in there and put it in the oven and keep increasing the temperature till it falls over under its own weight. I will continue to anneal for those tests, but for these tests here, the PA12 carbon fiber, I'm not doing the annealed anymore. It's just, uh, that's, that's one day of testing here. That's, I don't know how well, camera picks that up. That's one day of testing. It creates a lot of, a lot of waste. So but in the name of science or in the name of figuring out what this filament is, we're going to create waste. Anyway, PA12 carbon fiber tin. So it's they're in their fiber online. Um, they've had the PA12 for a long time. They changed name over to fiber on when they launched fiber on. I did a launch video for that up here somewhere. Um, Again, as printed, it, it called for 280 to 300 degrees nozzle temperature, 40 to 50 degrees build plate. I did print at 300 first layer, 290, all the rest of the layers after that, I did run the build plate at 80 degrees. Um, don't ask me why. And that was done on the Voron over there, so it's not a heated, active heated chamber. Had no issues with the stuff printing. It, it printed beautifully. Um, these, these pieces here would have been printing, standing up. You know, there's a little bit of a roughness around the edge here, but that's not due to anything wrong with the material. That's, that's print settings. Um, trying to find, anyway, you get the idea. Um, yeah, there's, there's the core pieces that are printed or not, that's printed laying flat. So let's jump over and look at the numbers first. Um, and then we'll talk about the material a little bit more and, and pricing and such. So this is my chart. 
you found the channel, it starts here. It's not hidden behind a paywall. Click on it, use it. Um, I've explained this many times how it works. Uh, you can sort by everything here, but I, I let's jump over here to comparison view and let's actually go down here and let's pull up these. Uh, let's pull up all three of the the uh, nylons that I've done for Polymaker. Um, so we're just going to go with the as printed. I'm not going to do the annealed anymore. And uh, there we go. So here we go. This is. PA612, PA12, PA6, and CoPA. So CoPA is a blend. I don't exactly understand what it is. So the PA12 is what we tested right here. And as you can see, 335.3. Uh, PA612 did the best at 354. And then PA6 with double the amount of carbon fiber, um, even lower. And then Co-PA had no fiber added to it. It's just as printed or as, no, no fiber added to it. Yield point, that's how far it stretches before it breaks. Um, PA, or stretches before it peaks out, excuse me. This is the peak and not the break. 6.36 on the PA6 and then PA12 and PA612, 5.42. They're exactly the same number. That doesn't happen very often. Co-PA, 4.31. The break is how far after it stretches before it breaks. And you'll notice Co-PA doesn't even show up on here because at that point in time, my machine would only go out to, I think, 6 millimeters or 10 millimeters. And it wouldn't, it wouldn't break the Co-PA, it just stretched. But PA6, 7.79 before it broke. PA12, which is one we're talking about right now, 5.6. And you can see 5.42 where it peaked, 5.6 where it broke. On the 612, 5.42 where it peaked, 5.47 where it broke. So they don't stretch much further after they peak out before they break. Layer break, 10 millimeter square, five walls, 40% infill. Um, pull it till it breaks. Layer adhesion and... PA12, CF10, it had the best layer adhesion of all the nylons at 139. The PA612 with 15% carbon fiber came in second. PA6 carbon fiber 20% dropped way down and then CoPA was really low. Uh, direct thread yields. This is a different story when it comes to the CoPA. 86 kilograms of force. The PA12, 50 kilograms. And then it goes down from there. Heat set. Same thing. Co-PA did the best, 121. The PA 12, 97.37, which came in third. Izod shock, that's the hammer over here to my left. And surprisingly enough, the PA 12 carbon fiber 10 did the best on that. And for a carbon fiber filled filament, that is a pretty respectable number. Let's jump over here. We're looking at Izod, and let's see here. That's a 43. We go down here. That's right in the middle of the, the field. And if you start looking above that 43, you're not going to find any filaments with any kind of uh, carbon fiber or anything like that added to them. So as far as a carbon fiber filled material, the PA12 carbon fiber 10, Knocked it out of the park on that. So that's it. That's the Polymaker Carbon Fiber 12, um, or, you know, Polymaker PA12 Carbon Fiber 10%. Um, it's not a cheap filament. It's $69.99 for a half kilogram. So you're not going to buy this just to print with to have fun. Um, it, it's expensive. Fortunately, Polymaker supplies me with materials, and, and they also monetarily support my channel every month. So I, I, I can get the stuff to test it, but it is a pricey filament. You're, you're going to need to identify a use case where you need the properties of polyamide 12, PA12 nylon with carbon fiber. And the carbon fiber helps with the printability, and it helps with the heat rejection of the material. And I'm going to be doing some heat rejection testing 
right here with these. And I'm also working on, I'm, I'm finishing it up right now, a new test where a couple of things. Um, this piece right here, these pieces will be printed, and then I will take a, a twisty torquey thing, and I will set the torque on these screws to 50 newton meters when I first put it on there. And we'll measure it with this tool here to see how high the screw head is. Then setting out in front of this on another set of framework will be, if I can find one of them, a different dial indicator that 20 millimeters back from the end will be measuring the bend on this. So we'll do a initial with this right here, and this puts about a hundred and 20 grams of load on there. And then we'll take a 200 gram weight like this and hang it on there, which this one doesn't hang on there yet because I printed that with the wrong size. But we'll hang that on there and I'll immediately take a reading there. And then after an hour, I'll take another reading on this gauge here. After 24 hours, I'll recheck this. I will retorque it to 50 newton meters and I will check the height of the screw head and then each day after that every 24 hours up to seven days check the record the distance on this meter recheck the torque on this record the screw head height tell you how much crush is being imparted on the part uh, over time and my plan is to do these for seven days you'll be able to see a trend if it goes down then levels out you'll know that it when it gets to a certain point it comes levels out if it continues to do this or accelerates down it's just a starting point so those tests are coming up and again not going to be doing the annealed testing unless I'm actually doing heat rejection or some kind of heat testing it's just it's too much work too many data points and we already know that you know annealing Annealing is done more for heat rejection ability than it is for strength. So there you go. That's it for now. Uh, I've got some more tests coming. I've got another product launch coming up here in about a week and a half. That stuff is printing right now. Can't talk about what it is. It's right over there. Just got done doing a max flow rate on it. And uh, be doing that video. Hit the thumbs up if you want to see more of these. Hit the subscribe button. That helps the algorithm. Hit the bell icon when you want to see the next video drop. And as always, I can't say it enough. I appreciate each and every one of you that stick around all the way to the end and watch me ramble on. Buy me a coffee if you want to continue to see more of these. Help support the uh, cost of doing the uh, charts and all that and keeping those from being behind a paywall. Don't have to. They're still free. They're going to remain free. But as always, Peace out.